Hello, welcome to Kbox TV, and I'm here with Christian Commerce Manager Michael Amobi here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Um, um, it was a very great first before I go into, I mean, Richie and then you, um, I want to ask first the government part. Mm -hmm. What do you think would be the best way to make Investment. You know, investment. It, supporting the amateur program to the best of its ability. You know, making sure that an amateur program has everything it needs to progress and to compete on the same level as all the other countries. It's not fair that they should have to compete, they should have to train and go through rigorous training programs and then for some of them to be told that they can't go because there's not enough funding. They can't go to certain tournaments because there's not enough funding. The government should be putting all its power and might behind. Just as they do with football, they should be doing it with the amateur boxing. The amateur boxing. Program. No, they should be given the facilities, like I said to you, the facility I saw where they train is not good enough. It's not good enough. It's disrespectful, it's disgraceful to ask these boys and girls to train in a facility like that and then expect them to go and compete at a level with everybody else. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. So they have to look at themselves and the sports ministry has to look at that and say, okay, what can we do? How can we help them to compete on a level playing field? That means getting them the right equipment. That means getting the right facility. That means getting them the gloves, the bags, the skipping ropes, you know, the attire, all those things. Getting the coaches, the right training, you know, making sure that we have more coaches to train these, these, these children, and these young boys and girls to train to get to the highest level. And all these things they have to invest. You know? Otherwise, we're always going to be at the bottom of the ladder, always, when it comes to amateur boxing. And then you're gonna you're gonna get one maybe wins a bronze medal somewhere. It's not good enough. We should be competing for gold medal. Commonwealth Games. We should be competing for gold medal. You look at the countries in the Commonwealth. You look at all the countries in the Commonwealth. Ghana is one of the biggest when it comes to boxing. When was the last time we won a Commonwealth gold medal? Um, I think that's very interesting out there. Um, and now, now let's come to you and Richie. I mean, how's the journey been for you? So far, for two, since 2010, 2010, yeah, it's been, yeah, it, it's been a tough, eventful, up and down journey, but we had the belief. I always had the belief in Richard's ability, and Richard always had the belief in me. And once you have the belief, the journey becomes easier. You have your ups and downs, and you have your obstacles that you have to get over. But you know, when you're working with someone like Richard, um, the way he works, it makes my job a lot easier. The way he's disciplined, the way he, you know, I mean, he's focused, it makes my job a lot easier. But it's tough being with certain stigmas around the Ghanaian fighters around the world. You know, Ghana, you can fight him with a great head. And when you go outside, it's very hard to get sponsorship, it's very hard to get promoters, it's very hard to get people to believe and want to wanna actually spend their money in a Ghanaian or an African fight. These are the challenges and obstacles that I've had to overcome in the future. And that's my job. Right, so what would you say to the managers and then the other promoters in Ghana who are managing the, 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 the boys there? Would you still tell them to stick with them? Or is there anything that you can tell them that will make them want to, I mean, stand with them? They have to ask themselves. Do they want a world champion? Or do they just want to make money out of fires at a lower level? Simple. If you want a world champion, then it's a long haul. So it's an investment. If you want to make money out of fighters, go and pick them up from anywhere, get them five, six, seven fights, you might get a chance of fighting in the UK for a Commonwealth title or fighting in Australia or something. And do that. So you know, there are some money doesn't want to help boxers. And the boxers themselves do have problems for them. You understand? But some boxers are not really, they have management issues for them that year like that. They're not really this. But that works on both sides. As a manager, you have to put yourself in a position where the boxer understands you from day one understands what your role is and understands the journey yeah if he doesn't and he doesn't get to educate himself on what that is then it's always going to be difficult working with that boxer yeah the boxer has to know that at this low level there's no money there's no money all the money is coming out of the manager's pocket so he has to respect that and he has to do what he can to understand that if the manager believes in him and the manager's going to invest in his own money then it's a long haul so the boxer has to then keep quiet, just do what's asked of him until such time as the money starts coming back. 
yeah. which could be a long time. True. But the pops, but as a in manager, case, like nine years. Yeah, but as a manager, you have to you have to make the boxer aware of that from the beginning. Because the boxer will think, I'm going to go and fight and I'm going to earn money. And when he doesn't get paid or he doesn't get this or he doesn't, then he starts complaining. If you don't educate the boxer in the first place, that's when the problem starts. All right, now you have Lupe in the picture. Mm -hmm. What's your plans? Same as well. Train hard, work hard, make sure we have everything in place. And Richard executes the plan. And now you have Lupe Champ. After Lopez, we have Lomachenko. If Lomachenko comes to the table, no problems. Are you, are you looking at it this year or next year? Maybe next year. Next because year. Richard will look to fight two for now in November, which I think we're planning. And then next year, um, it will probably be uh, Lomachenko. But we're not taking our half two for now. That's our first year. Oh, yeah, very true. And um, I realize that, I mean, I'm a big girl for yourself, and then Richie has a very large followership on social media. They really do love you. Mm. Do you have any message for them? No, just keep supporting us. You know, keep believing in us. We're trying to do Ghana proud. We're trying to do the boxing world proud in terms of, you know, there's not too many African world champions. You know, so it's, it's very difficult. You know, so support us. Support the foundation, what we're trying to do in terms of raising the profile of Ghanaian boxing, helping facilitate the amateur pro program and the young kids in and around the country of Ghana, you know what I mean, to, to step into Richard's shoes and want to be a world champion like Richard. There's a lot of work to do, sure. but believe we can do that work and believe we can produce more and more fighters like Richard Conrad. Now, before you go, I know you have Duke Michael in your cup. Yeah. What's any, like, any updates on him? I've been speaking with uh, Keith Connolly, who I work closely with, with, with Duke and with, and with Richard. And he has, uh, we, he has uh, been speaking to um, Al Heyman of the PDC, and it looks like we've got a date for Duke, probably August the 31st or September the 21st. We're looking at both dates and opponents at the minute, but hopefully Duke will be out at the end of the summer, you know, and we can kickstart his career. Obviously, you know, which, uh, we had problems with him and his previous promoters, uh, and we had to work out all those issues and stuff like that. It's been a long, hard battle, but we've ma managed to do that. Now it's just about getting Richard the right promoter, uh, yeah, sorry, Duke the right promoter, and, and putting the right, putting him on the right path. And it looks like Keith, you know, I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna come back to me today or tomorrow and confirm to me that we're gonna be on the 21st of August, August. Or, or, no, the 31st yeah. of August, or the 21st of September. Okay. And then before you go to, you have, you have a lot of boxers in your company. I have a when few I, in the UK. Yeah, yeah. When, when I posted at the, um, uh, the update I'm going to speak to you, most of them ask me, let them know, let, I want to know how did the rest of the guys. Right, so we've got Ramez. Ramez Mahmood is a fantastic young fighter in, in, in the UK. He's actually a maths, a maths teacher. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's he okay. a maths teacher. Okay. And he's fighting this year on September the 7th for the Southern Area title in Great oh, Britain. Great. So I'm really, really pleased for him. We've yeah. got high hopes for him. Yeah. Ryan Walker, he lost his Southern Area title fight uh, last year, um, or was it early this year? And um, he, yeah, it was last year, and he had his first fight back this year. Performed fantastically well, really improved, really put in a great performance. He again will be fighting on September 7th, so we're looking forward to him on that show to re-establish himself and hopefully get a Southern Area title for him later on in the year. Then we have uh, Ishmael Oladipo, Biggie we call him, a heavyweight, oh, okay. you know what I mean, who will be fighting on that show. He, he had his first fight and un he's been unlucky with injuries, so he's not been able to, to get, get his career really started where he wanted it started. But hopefully, you know, he has, he's, a, he's training through the summer and we can get him out on that December, September 7th show and that'll be fantastic for him. And then we have Jordan Dujon, our last fighter that we signed. He had his first type, uh, his first fight uh, a month ago. Done extremely well. His first, you know, it's always hard having the first fight. He won that fight very convincingly. So he again will be fighting on September the 7th. So we've got high hopes for all these guys. And you know, I mean, it's great work of them. My son Michael and Mr. Arthur Jr. Yeah. trains them all. And, have, uh, and he doesn't train at Ishmael, but he trains with the other three. But he, he's got a fantastic rapport with these fighters and they're doing exceptionally well. And I hope to bring Michael to Ghana uh, soon so that he can do some help train some of the amateur squad and give his insight into amateur boxing as well. Because he fought for the Black Bombers and he trained with the Black Bombers. So I'm hoping to bring him down with the foundation as long as, a few, as well as a few other people which I won't tell you now about, but hopefully <laughs> after Richard's fight we can surprise Ghana and bring a few people down later on in the year and do some stuff in Ghana boxing. One question every Ghanaian wants to ask this man is this, will Amu Bidiaku ever promote in Ghana? Of course. 
I'd love to promote the Ghana. The problem is, it's very difficult getting the, the, the sponsorship and investment from corporate bodies. They just don't get it. They just don't get it. And TV don't get it. You know, we wish a TV company would come on board and say, right, we're going to support boxing. We're going to support boxing. We're going to televise boxing. So if it's live or if it's pre recorded, we need TV to spread the word around the country. You know, so that the, the corporate bodies can use that opportunity to sponsor and to invest in boxing. But I would love to promote in Ghana and never know. Maybe by the end of the year, we'll do another show. All right, thank you very much for speaking to you. Take care.